Hey everybody, Jessica Cavesi here. In this tutorial, I'm going to be going over some retouching techniques more in depth and really showing you guys exactly how to do it, some different tips and different tricks that I use. The first retouching technique that I'm going to be going over is the frequency separation. And this is using Gaussian Blur. Um, there are other ways to do retouching, but again, this is just the first technique that I'm going to be showing you. This is going to be kind of like a three-part tutorial with different techniques so you can kind of figure out which one you prefer. So first, what we're going to want to do for this certain technique is the background layer, you're going to want to make two copies of it. So just press Command J and make two copies. Um, you're going to want to shift, hold, and then copy to the duplicate layers. And then you're going to want to group them. So just press Command G while selecting both. The reason why we're putting them in their own category is because we want to separate them from the background layer. Now you're going to want to make the bottom layer. You can name the skin. Or you, it doesn't really matter. What, I mean, you can just do low frequency separation, low frequency, but um, I just use skin and texture. So the top one will be named texture. Now we're going to take the texture layer off. So we're just going to make it not visible. And we're going to go to the skin layer. First, what we're going to do is go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now the amount of blur you want to add kind of depends on the picture, the size of the photo, but you want to make sure that it's kind of all the things are merged together. So all the tones, all the colors, you don't want to do it like this. I mean, that's not really going to help you. So I'm just going to keep it around nine just for this example. So again, colors aren't exactly merged, but they're kind of like blending into one another. So just press OK. And then what you're going to want to do is go to texture and turn that layer back on. And then go to image, apply image. And now we're going to add this layer, we're going to add the texture back to this. So we're going to make sure that the skin layer is chosen as the layer of choice. We're going to make sure that it's inverted. So it's supposed to be gray. So you want it, you want it gray. Blending mode is add. Opacity is at 100 and the scale is 2. So again, we're just adding the texture back to the layer. So after you do this, press OK. And now you should have a nice gray thing and the tutorial is over. I'm sorry. Okay, so go to no from normal to linear light. And ta-da, you just created your the same thing that you just had. So you're probably wondering what the heck did I just do? Um, this is the same thing that I just had. But what I did essentially is if you turn off the texture layer, you can see that I separated the skin from the texture. So the texture of her skin is on a separate layer and then her actual tones, the skin color, that is on a separate layer, which is going to be very helpful. So what are you supposed to do now? Okay, don't be afraid because when I first started, I was like, what, what the hell am I doing? It's really not that complicated. What you're going to want to do is first make a copy of the skin layer because, I don't know, I'm just paranoid. I need to have a separate layer. Go to the healing brush tool and I'm going to have it around like a smaller size. It doesn't have to be huge. Make sure it's set to current layer. And here are my settings. Size 80, hardness 100, spacing is 20. I don't really care about spacing. But anyways... So what we're going to want to do is all these inconsistencies, we're going to make them consistent. So what I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to show you guys a little bit of what I'm doing. So I'm going to press Alt, click, and then kind of go over the areas that aren't the same color. So I'm just merging the colors together. It's kind of like cleaning up something, cleaning up colors, kind of like blending the colors in a little more. So that's what all I did to the forehead. You guys saw what I just did. I'm going to show you guys. See the difference that it makes? I just smooth that area out. Again, just with the healing brush. And the nice part about this is that it's not affecting the texture. So again, this is on the skin layer. 
and just cleaning up that area. I'm just doing this forehead area just because it's a little easier. You're going to want to be careful when you hit like the nose area. You don't want to like do this and then it's inconsistent. So let me show you guys what I just did. That took me all of like two seconds and look, just made it so much better. Here I'll show you guys. I zoomed out. All I did was just fill in those areas. I'm just copying and pasting, if you will, um, the other color tones of her skin. And I'll show you, turn off the texture layer and you can see that I blended it in. So this is before and this is after. So you can kind of see what I did there. Now another technique with this frequency separation method is if you make a new layer, skin to, now keep this under the texture layer. Now I'll show you what you can do with this. On top of using the healing brush, you can also use the clone stamp tool. Now if you make this just a tiny bit bigger and keeping your opacity at a very low opacity, so I would even do like 15, 14 or something, hold the alt key and then slightly go underneath the eye and you can even fill in those areas without being too obvious. Now I don't know if you guys noticed what I just did. I just filled in that area and it's you're not taking away the texture, it's not looking too obvious, but it still looks really nice. So again, using the clone stamp tool with a new raster layer, hold the alt key and click on a lighter color skin and then you're just going over that skin. And the reason why I use a separate layer is because I can control the opacity and I don't like to use the main layer because I don't I just like to have control over every change that I make. You can even go on the top right there. Actually, I wouldn't do that right now. And you can just fill in those areas. Again, very simple. You don't have to be like Photoshop master to do this. I don't even know if there's such a thing as Photoshop master. It sounds like, I don't know, something from a video game like Photoshop master. And if you're probably wondering why I'm doing this and then none of the, those small blemishes are going away, I'll show you guys in just a second how to get rid of those. So again, I just went over that very quickly and I just brightened up some of the areas over here. Now another thing that you could do is make another layer. And now I'm going to take my brush tool, use a nice and fluffy brush, hardness of zero make it slightly smaller and then I'm going to lower the opacity to about 22 go from normal to lighten and now what I'm going to do is select a light skin color and you know softly go over some areas and as you can see that also brightens things up but I want to go even lighter and do 11% and again I'm literally just going over some dark areas you'll see how easy this is It's like it's like if you use if you're like twelve percent, it'll make a huge difference. But if you go down to eleven, it won't do anything. So, okay. So let me show you guys. And again, I literally just used, you know, the just that brush, and I just lightened up those parts of her face. And I don't usually use this at full opacity ever. Very subtle. But I usually do this after I clean up the skin completely. But this is really nice when you want to pop out some more highlights and stuff like that. So I'm going to go back to my skin layer and using the original method, the healing brush tool, I'm just going to go over some more things. And I'm just going to show you guys a quick and easy edit of this photo. And you don't want to go over you know lines right here you just want to get the colors that's it you don't want to go over the eye anything like that Hold on. 
gosh. I'm just messing up today. I've been meaning to make this tutorial like every day. I'm like, oh, I'll just do it today. So here I am. I'm doing it. I'm so proud of myself. <laughs> okay. So again, just going over those darker parts of her face and blending everything. Just think of it like a huge gradient. You just want everything to be a nice transition. And sometimes it won't transition right away because you have to go um, fix the texture layer, which I'll do in just a second. But the first thing I do is go over and do as much as I can to the skin. Okay. So I think that's pretty good. And you can always check to see how you're doing by just turning off the texture layer and seeing how the skin looks. Um, sometimes you can even just add it like that, but I mean, you probably really hurt your eyes. You're probably going to need some sunglasses after this. So turning the texture layer back on, I'm just going to show you guys the difference that made. Very simple. I'm going to show you guys a close-up. Again, just using very simple methods. I didn't do anything crazy. And now I'm going to go to the texture layer, which essentially holds all the textures to her face. I'm going to make a copy of this and turn off the top copy. And you don't have to do this. You can just edit on the texture, but I like to have a copy because if I make a mistake, I'll just shut my computer off and that won't be really good for the tutorial. So. For the texture layer, you're going to want to use a smaller brush. You don't want to use a huge brush because you don't want to sample a huge chunk of the skin. It's just going to look strange. So again, what you're going to want to do is Alt key, hold, and just kind of, you know, go over different areas. And you're not going over her entire skin. That's the secret to this. I mean, I wouldn't really call it a secret, but you don't want to go do her whole face. It's not going to look natural and it's going to, you know, you're going to be on the computer for a while. So just go over small areas that are, you know, distracting, distracting lines. And if you're doing a distracting line, I would go the smallest you can go. Um, hold on a clean area of the skin and just drag so that that line can be gone. But I don't really mind those lines. Personally, I don't really mind. And down here, I'm just going to click on a clean part of the skin and I'm just clicking around. And again, sample clean skin. You can sample from a nearby area. Click. I just sound weird saying that. Just click. Okay. But it's true. That's what you do. Okay. So these are all the areas that I would tackle. Anything that's kind of distracting. Again, you're, this is a really small brush. So I just like to like blend in everything. Okay. This isn't going to be perfect, but it's okay because when you zoom out, it'll look good. <laughs> but no, really, like it looks a lot better. But you'll notice that the texture sometimes won't be perfect, so don't mess with it too much. I will sit and work on a certain area for 20 minutes and I'll, it'll suck. So just don't overthink it. Just very subtle, small areas. Not going over her whole skin. And as far as like the bags under the eyes, they don't really bother me. I think if you just lighten them up a small bit, it's fine. It actually makes it look more natural rather than just removing the whole... I mean, we all know you have the bag under your eye. Like, you ain't fooling nobody. So, yeah, just keep it. And my, that's my opinion, though. Again, small areas. Okay. That looks pretty good. And just gonna fix the forehead a bit.
Again, you don't have to worry about this being perfect. I'm not going to do like her whole skin because, I mean, you'll be here all day probably. But just something, again, very simple. I keep saying that, but I really do mean it. So, I mean, there you go. I just quickly did this. Any last minute touches I would do, um, I would just go and pop the eyes, which, God, this really, okay, it doesn't really sound that great of me. Well, okay, you'll understand what I mean, like enhance the eyes. Um, I make a new layer, make sure it's under the texture layer. I go from normal and I put it to overlay. And the opacity, I keep it around like 30-40%. And I just use the white color and I just kind of go over the eye area. And then I use the black to outline. But don't do it like too much. It's going to look like a comic book character and it's kind of scary. Like that. You don't want to keep it like that. It's kind of weird. So just lower the opacity. Just slightly. Just kind of got her eye to be a little bit more enhanced. Okay. So again, before and after and really that didn't really take me long at all and this is just a simple portrait in my next tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to color this image so stay tuned and I hope you guys um, learn some little tips and tricks the key to you know getting better at this is to just focus on simplicity don't go too crazy with it it's, you're not gonna do it right away you're not gonna get it right away but it just takes a little bit of practice but it's not hard at all if I could learn it you can learn it too um, hope you enjoyed watching and please let me know if you have any requests thank you guys